antimicrobial effects of essential oils. Essential oils have come under the microscope of research scientists and medical doctors over the last few decades because of their immensely powerful action against various pathogenic germs, including fungi, bacteria and even viruses, which by standard means of modern allopathic approaches have proven to be more and more resistant against a large variety of antibiotics. Numerous scientists and medical doctors have compared in their publications the advantages of what they call the eubiotic approach of medical aromatherapy versus the allopathic or antibiotic approach of Western medicine. They have pointed out the complex action of an aromatic molecule on the germ, the milieu and the immune system in general versus the extremely limited antimicrobial properties of chemical weapons with their numerous unwanted side effects. Antibiotic resistance is increasing with the result that standard treatments are losing their efficiency. The methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, for example, is a known element in this context and contributes largely to this helpless situation. Quorum sensing bacteria, the subtle ability of bacteria to communicate with each other, this we know today, are using their own language and their strategies in releasing toxic molecules which are able to weaken the immune system and create severe damage to host tissues. They are largely responsible for mortality and difficult to neutralize with standard antibiotics. It is true that antibiotic resistance as such is not a totally new phenomenon, but it is rather the drastical growing over-exaggerated use of antibiotics that has given rise to an increasing number of pathogenic organisms which have developed their own defense system against major antibiotic drugs in recent years. But why, if we want to speak of a war between humans and bacteria, whatever may be its evolutionary side effect, yes, why do we still think that the enemy would not find, or better, would not have found since long, its own defense mechanisms if we always use the same weapon? Essential oils could kill the deadly MRSA, hospital superbug, scientists have claimed not long ago. At the University of Manchester, researchers analyzed three essential oils which destroyed methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, and Escherichia coli bacteria in two minutes. One of the scientists who did this research pointed out that a more pleasant inhalation therapy with these essential oils quote, were likely to have a much higher success rate than the current treatment, which is only effective in around 50% of cases. We believe that our discovery could revolutionize the fight to combat methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and other superbugs, end of quote. Are these findings totally new for us? Actually, the theme of essential oils and their antimicrobial efficiency is much older than we think. It is only that, under the grip of modern allopathic medicine, with the known keen interest groups and lobbies in the background, we have simply preferred to ignore the fact that nature has her own strategies since millions of years against superbugs. Antimicrobial warfare, if we want to call it like this, is certainly as old as plants exist on this planet. If plants, by means of essential oils, are able to defend themselves against parasites, against fungi, bacteria, viruses, if they are able, with the help to communicate among each other, attract pollinators, thermoprotect and energize themselves, etc., it would have been strange if we as human beings would not have come to this precious gift of the plant kingdom 
for our own well-being. Actually, we have done this since long. We have always used medicinal plants through the ages, and many of these plants are endowed to a high degree with antimicrobial essential oils. Aromatherapy is just a modern version of an age-old plant medicine in its most compact form. It uses the powerful energy and biochemistry of numerous medicinal plants around the globe for a new approach to healing with nature. The advantage today is that we have access to a real world pharmacy of the plant kingdom. Ethno-medical knowledge from all cultures is available to everyone due to the marvelous exchange of cultures from all continents. And essential oils, which are among the prime healers, can be found in every town today. Organic stores, drugstores, pharmacies, internet shops, etc., etc. Can we imagine how many severe epidemics we would have avoided if we have had available our own home pharmacy, equipped with major antiviral and antibacterial essential oils diffused in the air or administered directly via local skin applications or oral intake? Of course, in certain areas of Europe, fumigation, ointments, pills as well as essential oils, all based on medicinal plants, were sometimes used, but unfortunately not in a systematic way. In the early 16th century, the famous astrologer and physician Michel de Nostradamus, known as Nostradamus, fumigated whole villages with essential oils carrying aromatic plants to fight off the plague. The Black Death had come back after its furious attacks on Asia and the Old Continent in the 14th century already, when more than 100 million people had died from it within a few years, and one-third to one-half of the European population perished. Or we think of the 1918 flu pandemic 100 years ago. It infected 500 million people across the world, including remote Pacific islands and the Arctic, and resulted in the deaths of 50 to 100 million, 3 to 5 percent of the world's population, making it one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. It is hard to imagine, quote, what would have happened with the powerful antiviral oils of modern aromatherapy collectively made available. End of quote. During the great waves of plague, those who were in touch with aromatic medicinal plants or essential oils were often found to be immune against the disease, while others around them were dying. This was the case with the farmers or workers in the lavender fields, for example, in Provence, and those in grass who were tanning the leather gloves and bags for the rich ladies in Savoy, Italy, using essential oils to perfume the stinky rough leather. They escaped from the plague untouched, whereas their masters perished like flies. And then from here in the 17th century, the perfumery industry in grass started. The perfuming of these leather gloves and so on, amazingly enough, gave a new signal for a large reawakening of a special plant medicine through aromas. And then the scientists appeared. Waves of research started over 100 years ago already. Especially starting with the beginning of the 20th century, a considerable number of research studies in France brought to light interesting health effects of a number of essential oils. Professor Griffon, for example, studied the antiseptic properties of essential oil blends, among which lemon oil played a major role. Morel and Rocher proved that the evaporated particles of lemon oil are capable of neutralizing the meningococcus, the meningitis infector, it's a blood infection, within 15 minutes, and the pneumococcus, which creates pneumonia, in one to three hours. And finally, the Staphylococcus aureus, which is an infector for skin and respiratory problems and food poisoning in two hours, 
and the hemolytic streptococci breaks down the red blood cells. This guy carries pneumonia, blood poisoning, septicemia, inflammation of the lining of the brain and of the spinal cord, creating meningitis and so on, within 3 to 12 hours. And then now, and since not more than about one to two decades, more and more research all over happens. The annual research report of 1996 of the Weber State University cites 19 oils which displayed a 100% kill rate against the T7 phage and three oils which displayed a 100% kill rate against Staphylococcus aureus again. Jane Buckle, in her famous book Clinical Aromatherapy, Essential Oils in Healthcare, has given highly interesting summaries of the numerous research studies made over the last decade on antimicrobial effects of essential oils. Aromatherapy uses essential oils, carrier oils and hydrosols from all kinds of ethno-medical traditions around the globe. We can truly say again, for the first time in history, and this also due to our global connectedness, we have access to the traditional healing treasures of the world in our hands, many of them even in our own home pharmacy for powerful preventive self-care and self-healing. So we can take responsibility in many ways for our own health, become our own guardians of personal well-being. A simple investigation on numerous ailments can derive hundreds of scientific data today on ongoing or achieved clinical research with regards to essential oil. But even more precious for our own understanding than the scientific validation are the countless personal testimonials of essential oil users. And this should be the basis for a corpus of a new aromatherapeutic science of healing. And here are some examples. An essential oil extractor from coriander seeds has shown dramatic results against all major foodborne bacteria like the pathogenic forms of Escherichia coli and many others, as we have seen already. In Japan, engineers have started to incorporate aroma systems into new buildings. Fragrances such as lavender or rosemary are pumped into customer areas in order to reduce the stress and possible bacterial contamination during waiting. Other research has shown that diffusing rosemary oil in the classroom improve memory performance of the group by up to 75%. Scientific research clearly indicates that clove essential oil is highly antifungal towards all tested fungal species such as Candida albicans, Penicillium citrinum, etc. Strongly antibacterial and the most powerful known antioxidant in nature. Clove essential oil is widely understood to be generally antibacterial, but the University of Buenos Aires took the time to pinpoint bacteria that clove was especially able to target. They found that clove essential oil was particularly efficient against Escherichia coli, followed by Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Microbicide activity of clove essential oil with all of these connected to significant illnesses, skin infections and pneumonia, clove oil is an extremely valuable tool for disease prevention and treatment. Due to their rich biochemical profile, essential oils are multifunctional. It is this aspect of aromatherapy which makes essential oils so polyvalent. It makes it impossible for bacteria and viruses to become resistant to the impact of such a powerful molecular energetic diversity. Plants need this diversity because they are constantly exposed to large microbial threats from the environment. The essential oils in multiple synergistic blends and always slightly changing from year to year due to climatic fluctuations offer, as we have seen, a perfect defense against a large range of numerous pathogenic aggressors. This is also the reason why peppermint oil, for example, helps simultaneously against immunological, nervous, hepatic, skin, circulatory, 
intestinal and psychological disorders. Rose oil, for example, contains up to 500 different compounds. They are all very efficient because it's such a big number of compounds having their own word to say. Lavender, not much less. Each and every one of these molecules has developed over the endless corridor of time, or also possible, even emerged during this special alchemy of distillation. We can trust that nature knows best why and how. This intrinsic complexity and balance of biochemical compounds is one of the major aspects defining the special healing effects of a medicinal plant and its essential oil. Rose is the only thing you can take with you when you die because it is not of this world, says an old Persian proverb. We need to learn more from the secrets of nature's medicine. Everything else may lead to heavy mistakes against the cosmic laws of balance and progress in creation. This means also any one of the numerous compounds of a medicinal plant or its essential oil contributes to its healing properties. This is what holistic and natural mean in contrast to the isolative approach of modern medicine with its single directed molecules and its obsessive research for the so-called active ingredients. There are no passive ingredients anyway. They are all interlinked for some hidden reason. Isolating compounds for medicine can be a paradox and create medicine instead of medicine. Mad is sin. There is a subtle balance in the arrangement of biochemical compounds perfected by the invisible hand of Mother Nature. These compounds reflect also on the modes of energy which medicinal plants and their essential oils can convey to us humans. Why neglect this amazing complex network of time-tested healing impulses worked out for millions of years by only prescribing linear chemical drugs? If we want to make medicine more potent, we better look for a better understanding of nature's biochemistry and acquire deeper knowledge of the hidden connections between plant and man. The tremendous promise of holistic healing is one of the key factors for a quantum leap of human culture going hand in hand with the intelligence of an evolving universe. And to finish with a nice testimonial, our farmer friend Guy, who often helps us distilling at our Oshadi Aromatherapy Center in High Provence, France, was not answering the phone for quite some time when I tried to call him. Finally, we got him and we were shocked to hear his very weak voice, very unfamiliar for him. He told us he was in bed since days with something like a severe gastroenteritis, also a strong diarrhea as a symptom. Doctors did not know what to do with him. He did not eat more anymore. We grabbed five to six essential oils from our lab and straight made it with the car the one hour drive to his home. He was really not in good shape. Had never seen him like this. At his age 77 he looked nearer to death than to life. I asked him for some small jar of honey and mixed into it essential oils of oregano, thyme timol type, mountain savory, cinnamon bark, holy basil, and tarragon, something like 3% of essential oils, quite a lot in the blend, was honey. Nostradamus would have liked that. <laughs> then I told him to put his fingertip into it every hour and lick it. Next morning he called us and his voice was much better. And he said, first thing I did today, I went to the fridge and prepared my breakfast. I was hungry again. After a few days, he had completely recovered. 